It's that time of year again, time to crown the best hi-fi and home theater products of 2021, so let's do this. Before we get into the nominees and winners, remember that in order for a product to be eligible, it had to be reviewed on this channel in 2021. That's the only rule. So there is a chance few of the nominees won't be new new, but rather new to us. Kicking things off with Amplifier of the Year. The nominees are the Deckware Zen, Technics R1000, Yamaha AS3200, Audiolab 6000A Play, Cambridge Audio AXR100, the Blue Sound Power Node, and the Canner AI110. And the winner is... Honestly, any of these things could have won. Absolutely. This was maybe one of the hardest decisions to make, mm -hmm. but our winner for Amplifier of the Year goes to the Audio Lab 6000A Play. It does, it, it does, and it deserves it because it was neck and neck. It was neck and neck between this and the AXR100 from Cambridge, and if it wasn't for- Oh yeah, Cambridge lost at the very the, last like, second. Like literally like two days ago, Cambridge got knocked out of the top slot because of the Focal Aria K2. Honestly, I. I kind of want to still award the Cambridge Award. Um, they did; they were our workhorse this year. But yeah. Audio Lab, man, top notch product. Yeah, the, the six thousand A play truly in our in our time with it has not sounded bad with anything, and it has powered things where other amplifiers have had trouble. Like the Audio Lab actually made the PSB Synchrony T six hundred towers not suck whereas other amplifiers really had a hard time with that. So it's not about, it's not always about wattage and the 6000A play is a perfect example of that. So congratulations Audio Lab on your win for amplifier of the year. Our nominees this year, no real surprise, Onkyo RC50. We have the Denon X3700H. What? The Marantz <laughs> NR1711 the Onkyo 5100, and the Rotel 1580 MK2. Ooh. And the winner is? The winner is the Onkyo RZ50. I mean, I know they're hard to get, guys, and if you, if you pre-order them, you're gonna get your copy, but no receiver has come to market this year more fully realized and delivering on its promise of performance and features like the RZ50. And like I said in that review, the law of diminishing returns kicks in hardcore. Uh, are there receivers that cost more than the RZ50? Yeah, absolutely, we just reviewed one. Um, do they sound night and day better than the RZ50? No, they do not. And do they have all of the features that the RZ50 currently has? No firmware update. No, they don't. So the RZ50 was a no brainer. The next few awards are going to go to speakers, and we've broken them down into categories, starting with Best Speaker of the Year under $1,000. And the nominees are the Monitor Audio Bronze 100s, the Tannoy Gold 5s, Wharfdale Evo 4.1s, Polk Audio R200, Canto YU Passive, Magnet Transpulse, and the Cambridge Audio SX60. But the winner is... It's the Magnet Transpulse. 1500. Yeah. They, man, talk about being blown away by a speaker. Mm -hmm. Did not see that one coming. No, no, I didn't either. I was, um, I don't even think pleasantly surprised is the right description. It's, uh, it's shock. It's blown away. It was not, I didn't have the highest expectations. I thought maybe, oh, it'll just be kind of a fun, fun speaker. Uh, the fact that it, wasn't expensive and fun, but also insanely good. Uh, all things considered, um, this one ranks among my favorite of the entire year and totally deserving of best speaker of the year. Oh yeah, I miss them every day. They were so much fun. Uh, if you're looking for a speaker that maybe maybe gives you some like sort of vintage vibes, mm -hmm. you want to just rock out but you don't have a ton of money to spend, mm -hmm. this is such a good option. Yeah, it is, it is. And um, I'm probably gonna buy a pair. We're gonna have to get them back We're at gonna some have to point. get them back. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to get them because 
I kind of want to do something with them. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. I, know, I know where we're headed. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, congratulations to Magnet for Speaker of the Year under $1,000 for your Transpulse 1500. The nominees are Sonos Faber Lumina 2, the Heco Aurora 700, KLH Model 5, Dyn Audio, Evoke 20, and the Wharfdale Lintons. And the winner is... And the winner is... The Wharfdale Linton. I know, our review has not come out yet, so stay tuned for that. But, uh... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. They're good. They're really good. And the Wharfdale Lintons came in and stole this award from the KLH Model 5. You know, really, it could be a, a bit of a, to- a, a coin toss. Mm. Um, and I think you can kind of give some explanations. Well, we're going to give the explanation in the review because the review really will go in depth as to really what the perceivable differences are between these two products. Suffice to say is that they are very comparable. They're probably going to appeal to the same type of buyer slash listener. Um, but at the end of the day, the Wharfdale just proved to be a little bit more well-rounded across the board. And that is why it is our winner of Best Speaker of the Year under $2,500. The next category is Best Loudspeaker of the Year under $5,000. And the nominees are JBL L82, the Focal Cora 826D, the Klipsch Forte 4, and the Deckware Zen Master Series. But there can be only one winner, and the winner is... The Forte 4s by a landslide. Yeah. Yeah, these were... These were good. They're... They continue to be good. They're right there. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> they're awesome speakers. Yeah. N- no contest. Yeah, I think these might actually be, in terms of all-rounder, if you can go Klipsch Heritage, I think these are the best all round Klipsch Heritage speakers. And I know some of you are going to be like, you haven't heard the Cornwalls yet. But I've heard La Scala. And I'm telling you, the Forte 4s get you eerily close to Yeah, they're to really La Scala. good. And not everybody has the space. corners and yeah. for the Klipsch horns. Or- Klipsch horns, yeah. The Klipsch horns need to be corner mounted. Not everyone has the space for La Scala's. And frankly, not everyone's going to have the space for Cornwalls, though I can also hear some of you saying that, well, Magnet won Speaker of the Year, so you've got space for Cornwalls. The Cornwalls are a little bit bigger and dramatically more expensive. But uh, bringing it back, the, yeah. the Forte 4s are just amazing. They're really good. They are really, really good. Hands down, deserve to win. No problem. The nominees are Klipsch, La Scala, Focal, Diablo, Utopia, Evo, Color, and Bang & Olufsen, Lab 28. And the winner is... I wonder what you guys think it's going to be. I bet you'd get it wrong. Well, some of you might get it right. Some of you might get it wrong. But honestly, this one was tough. This one was very tough because the nominees are all deserving. But the winner is the Klipsch... La Scala. And if some of you have spit out your coffee and you're you're screaming at your screen, why is it not the Bang & Olufsen or the Focal? Those are both fantastic speakers. Absolutely fantastic. And I would be happy to call either one of them my own. The reason the La Scala wins is it is the only loudspeaker this year that brought both of us to literal tears yeah the emotional connection Connection. with the live sound that the Mm -hmm. la scala brings is really a once in a lifetime experience and i i hope that everybody watching gets that experience at some point in your life Mm -hmm. um it's it's you there really are not words to describe it you it is something you really need to experience for yourself yeah uh as andrew said the other two nominees Easily could have won. This was a very difficult decision. Uh, the Focal uh, Diablo speakers are some of the most interesting speakers um, mm-hmm. I personally have ever heard. They did things 
that no bookshelf speaker should really be able to do. Yeah. Um, I really loved those. And as far as the Bang & Olufsen goes, um, you know, it kind of broke Andrew's heart to not award them this, this win. Um, as, and they are so, so, so incredible mm -hmm. and beautifully built and just like taking design to the next level yeah. as Bang & Olufsen always does. Um, being able to basically just dial in any sound that you want is really where I think the future of hi-fi is going. Mm -hmm. Um, but the La Scala's yeah. man, just rip your heart out and, mm -hmm. um, make you fall in love with music all over again. The next category is Home Theater Product of the Year, and the nominees are the Sony HT-A9 with, with the SW5 subwoofer, the Onkyo RZ50, Sony Master Series OLED, Sony X95J 4K LED TV, Samsung Q950A soundbar, and the Blue Sound Power Node. But the winner is... Oh, hands down, the Sony A9 with... No, it is not optional. The SW5 subwoofer. Yeah. Just talk about feeling like you finally arrived into the future. Yeah, it is probably the most forward-thinking home theater product that I have experienced in a very, very long time. Um, I think sound bars in general are very forward-thinking. They're very uh, future, uh, um, future leaning. But the, uh, the A9 in that SW5 subwoofer when dialed in is awesome, just awesome. And I know they're hard to get. I know there are supply shortages. If you've pre-ordered it, you know, stay on the waiting list um, because I do. I think it's, I think it's worth it. And um, I know some people have been online talking about audio dropouts and whatnot. That has not been our experience. Full stop. It just, it just hasn't. It's happened one time in several months. Uh, and if you are experiencing that, um, check your Wi-Fi network, you know, maybe clean it up a little bit. I think you're going to find that that helps. But overall, it is just 100% deserving of the home theater product of the year. And the nominees for TV of the year go to the Sony X95J, the Sony Master Series OLED, the Vizio P Series Quantum X and the Vizio H1 OLED. Oh. And the winner is? All right. The fact that the H1 OLED is probably is even on the list is probably going to give us hate, but it's a good TV, but it is not our winner. The winner of TV of the year is the Sony Master Series OLED. I've never seen a better TV. It is incredible. Mm -hmm. It is incredible. Now, you and I We fought on this we one. We debated about this one. Yeah. A little bit. I'm not saying that I don't think that the Sony <laughs> OLED deserves to win because it is. I remember looking when we had that in for review, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. There was a 3D quality to it. Yeah. Without being. Without the glasses. Like, without, being <laughs> without being ridiculous. <laughs> without being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, 3D is, does not need to come back. It was yeah. horrible. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, it's a great, it's a great television, but I still think the X95J, mm -hmm. if you are looking for something in a larger format, like an 85 inch, which is what we have on our wall. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is so good. And I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Yeah. If it honestly, it was neck and neck and I could make a case for the X95J almost the same as I could for the P series Quantum X from Vizio, but the best of the best with honors. It's that master series OLED. It is the business and it deserves to win. Next up, we have our soundbar of the year, and the nominees are the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound Stage, the Vizio Elevate, Samsung Q950A, the LG SP9, and the Bose 900. But the winner is... This was so easy for me. <laughs> uh, the Samsung Q950A. 100% agree. Exceptional soundbar. Absolutely fantastic. Especially considering how affordable it is. Yeah, yeah. For what I, you're getting. I mean, I'm not saying it's cheap. Please don't 
come for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know price is relative. Uh, yeah. but you know, considering the enormous number of products we review on the channel, yeah. it is, it is a good price. And I, I mean, gosh, you know, you wait five minutes and it gets cheaper. <laughs> yeah. They have been lowering the price pretty steadily on that product and not because it's bad. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. And I just think that's what they do. Yeah, it is. It's what they do. Um, I have nothing more to say. It's, it's utterly fantastic. So congratulations, Samsung on soundbar of the year. Next up is our design of the year. Which products had the best design of 2021? And the nominees are the Bang & Olufsen Bio Lab 28, the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sounds Stage, Solid Steel Speaker Stands, High Desert High Moon Bookshelf Loudspeaker, and the Sonus Faber Lumina 2s. But the winner is... The Bio Lab 28. Of course. I mean... The odds were in their favor. They were nominated twice. <laughs> so yeah. it was be kind of hard for them not to win. Yeah. But they are so, so good at, at, at product design, yeah. style, packaging, yeah. just the overall user experience. Mm -hmm. It's always really, really good. Yeah. And it was, it was a pretty easy decision. Yeah. Visually to the user experience, everything about that particular product is getting you into enjoying music and movies seamlessly. And it's such a great design and arguably one of the best speakers Bang & Olufsen has ever made, at least that I have heard. Um, I am angling to try and get BLAB 50s or maybe even the 90s next year, but um, for what it's worth, I think the 28s are worth their asking price and then some and deserve to win design of the year. This category applies to products under $1,000. Okay. The nominees are Cambridge Audio AXR100, the Magnat Transpulse speakers, the Kanto YU passive speakers, the Blue Sound Power Node, and the Audio Technica LP140 XP turntable. All right. And the winner is. The winner is the Cambridge Audio AXR100 stereo receiver. This thing is an absolute beast at $600. And arguably, next to the Audio Lab, um, which isn't nominated in this category because it's over $1,000, the amplifier we relied on the most this year, without a doubt. And um, I don't have enough good things to say about it. I think it's fan. Fantastic. It is an embarrassment of riches, and I wish this type of product existed 20 plus years ago when I started my journey, but it's here now for all of you. And to me, this was really kind of close between this and Magnet, but I, I was all in on the AXR100. I mean, honestly, I really wish we could give everybody in this category an award because for their own reasons, mm -hmm. they were exceptional products. I mean, obviously, we've talked a lot about the Magnets already, and I've given you a bit of information about the Canto and how that impacted at least my experience mm -hmm. uh, in, in listening to audio this year. The Blue Sound Power Node, another really awesome, awesome product. You know, design wise, it looks great. It's, it doesn't break the bank. You can watch TV with it because it has the HDMI capabilities. It powers just about everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, Honestly, it easily could have won. Uh, and then the Audio Technica turntable, another workhorse for us this year. Yeah. We didn't review a ton of turntables mm -hmm. uh, this year, which is why we're not really doing a turntable award. Year, yeah. Um, but if there was one, it would definitely win. Uh, and it's, it's so affordable. Again, great category with mm -hmm. a, a lot of great products to consider. Absolutely. But... You can be only one winner, so congratulations to Cambridge Audio. Uh, your AXR100 is our product of the year under $1,000. Next up, we have our high-end product of the year. Uh, and the nominees are the Bang & Olufsen Biolab 28, the Klipsch La Scala, the Technics R1000 Integrated Amp, the Canner AI-110, Focal Utopia Diablo Evo Color, and the Sony Master Series OLED. But the winner is... Do we have just one? I think we have two, or did yeah. we? Yeah, okay. I 
I put both of them down because I can't decide. I cheated. You, you're, you're a, you are a big time cheater. Uh, <laughs> so we have two winners. We have co-winners. Co-winners. Co-winner for high product, high end product of the year, and they the awards, plural, go to the Bayo Lab Twenty Eights and our beloved Klipsch La Scala. Yeah, yeah. I. Do you want to um, say why why you couldn't choose? I couldn't. I couldn't choose. I. Um, this one, I literally called an audible probably about 15 minutes before we sat down to record this because they're both deserving. They're both deserving. They're both special in their own way. They are both polar opposites of one another in terms of who they're going to appeal to. Um, and because they're different enough, I felt that they deserve to win on their own merits individually. And so... If you had to pick... So they're the co-winners. The if co-winners. you had to pick a runner-up, runner-up for me, um, high-end products of the year. Runner-up for me, it was almost going to be the Technics R1000. That is one of the more impressive integrated amplifiers that um, I've ever I've ever heard, I've ever played with, I've ever been around. But my runner-up would actually be the Canner AI110 um, because. My runner-up for amplifier of the year would be the Deckware Zen Amp. Um, that amplifier is near as makes no difference, perfect to me. The reason it didn't win is it just doesn't work with every speaker the way the Audio Lab does. But the Canner AI-110 does work with a lot of speakers and does retain a lot of that magic that the Deckware has, which is why, like the Deckware, it has been an amplifier that we have relied on extensively this year, ever since we heard it. Um, and it is cost prohibitive. It is cheaper than the R1000, but it is nowhere near, you know, Audio Lab or, or Deckware Zen uh, levels of affordability, but it is, it is so good. It, it is, is so it's beautiful. Good. I would probably choose the Technics, mm-hmm. uh, the S, the SUR1000. Yeah. Whatever it's called. Um, primarily because, it, well, A, it's beautiful and it sounded so good with so many speakers. Yeah. But primarily before its uh, vinyl playback performance. So good. I don't think I've ever heard vinyl sound as good as it does on that particular amplifier. 100% agree with you. 100%. In terms of vinyl playback, I haven't heard better than the R1000. I really haven't. But the high-end product of the year co-winners are the Bang & Olufsen Biolab 28s and the Klipsch La Scala. So congratulations, guys. This is probably the biggest one. Yeah. Uh, This is overall product of the year got some pretty stiff competition <laughs> and the nominees are the sony hta9 the magnat transpol speakers the cambridge audio axr 100 the audio lab 6000a play the bang and olufsen bayo lab 28 and the klipsch la scala but the winner is the winner of the best product of the year on this channel for 2021 is the Audio Lab 6000A Play. I know, I know. Um, we went back and forth on this a little bit, and it yeah, could have. I mean, uh, uh, you know, look, Sony, if you're watching, you could have won this award. Yep. But the reason you didn't <laughs> is because you thought that having a subwoofer with the A9 was optional. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true, but the Audio Lab 6000A Play is the winner because it is, it's the complete package. It is the unsuck it button of amplifiers. <laughs> if you need an amplifier <laughs> to unsuck your speaker sound, yep. guess what? Audio Lab 6000A Play. Just yeah. plug it in, yeah. it works. Yeah. Not one thing that we connected to it this year sounded bad. It never failed to perform. It always just worked and it had the feature set that in my opinion is going to appeal to a lot of listeners, whether you're into vinyl, digital music, you're looking for uh, an integrator that you can connect to your TV. Um, it's, 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 it's everything. It does it all. It's really, really, really good. And um, 
I, I think it's completely deserving of oh, I, th- I agree. product of the year. So congratulations to Audio Lab for the 6000A play. You are our overall product of the year for 2021. Our last two categories are going to be a little bit more fun, although I've had a lot of fun doing this whole video, to be honest with you, but they're more personal. And so we're going to kick things off with Christie's favorite product of the year. First, give me your nominees, because I don't know what you're going to pick. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know if I know what I'm going to pick. <laughs> I didn't know I was going next. You were supposed to go first. Uh, okay. So my favorite products of the year have been the Magnet Transpose 1500s, mm-hmm. the Cambridge Audio AXR100, the Sony A9, and the SW5 subwoofer, the Forte 4s, mm-hmm. and the Lascalas from Klipsch. The why you pass it? Oh my gosh, I really didn't narrow this down at all. The uh, the Sony X ninety five J TV and the Sonus Bob or Lumina two. So what wins? I have no idea. <laughs> oh God. Ah, uh, I need a minute. Can we come back to me? <laughs> Next up is my personal favorite product of the year, and the nominees are the Bang & Olufsen Biolab 28, Magnet Transpose 1500, the Klipsch La Scala, the Deckware Zen Amp, the Sony A9 with the SW5 subwoofer, the Canner Audio AI-110, and the Techniques R1000 integrated amplifier. But there can be only one, and my favorite, my personal favorite product of 2021 Ah, this one's so hard. There's actually three on this list that I could pick, um, and I'd be happy with any of them, to be honest with you, or they would be deserving of any of them. Uh, but my, my favorite product of the year has been the La Scala. It just, it reminded me of why I like this hobby so much. And in a lot of ways, it reinvigorated a passion in me to want to participate in it further because it's very easy to get burnt out in in this hobby. It really is. Um, It's not a perfect speaker. I know that. It's not going to be for everyone. It is not ruler flat. It is not neutral. It is not all of these things. But it delivers where it matters most for me, and that is right here. And nothing connected with me the way that the La Scala did. And my runner up would be the Zen amp because the Zen amp with the La Scala is what made all of that come together. But the La Scala is my personal favorite product of the year. You're ready? Think, okay. Yeah, so I, I think that I've, I, I, I figured it out for, right. I felt on the spot earlier mm-hmm. and I really could, didn't remember how long my list was and, I got a little self-conscious about it, but I'm I'm ready now. Okay, so we're going back, rewinding it. Christie's favorite product of the year is... The Magnat Transpulse 1500 speakers. I'm shocked. Are you? No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a little surprised. Listen, I loved these speakers. I think I'm surprised because I liked how big they were. They're a black box, which against goes against everything I believe in. but I love that sort of just old school design, you know, mm-hmm. uh, of something big and bulky and it doesn't really fit anywhere, which is why we had to send them back. But they were so much fun and they're so affordable. Mm-hmm. And I love affordable audio. Mm-hmm. It gets those kinds of products really just get me excited because I think yeah. that having something affordable mm-hmm. is really the thing that's going to keep new people coming into the hobby. And if you're just starting out, I think that this would be so much fun, so much fun. Like I can imagine when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. if I, if my parents had had something like this, I would have just been absolutely obsessed with high five from the beginning, you know? And I think it's the type of product that can really just, make you a fan of listening to music and movies, watching mm-hmm. movies mm-hmm. for your whole life. Totally. It is It is probably the ultimate gateway speaker that 
we've encountered this year, without a doubt. And I'm not surprised because very few products this year have seemed to elicit the type of response that you've had over the weeks and months while the transpoles were here and since having to send them back. Um, really, there's probably only two other products that you talk about with the same excitement as that. So not and surprised. That's, and but that's really thing. what it's about. Yeah. yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nope. Uh, it really is about a connection. Yep. So fantastic pick. Thank you. I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody that's continued to watch and subscribe and clicked on our links mm -hmm. and help us um, continue to grow as a channel. And those of you that have accepted me as well. I mean, I know, I know you're, you would like to see me on my face and, and I appreciate those of you that understand why I just choose to be off camera. Yeah. Um, but Andrew and I both both really appreciate all of your support. Yes, we do very much so. And and thanks to all the brands also that yeah. have continued to send product and made made the whole experience of getting products in for review easy. That's um, that's something that I don't think is talked about enough. And also to the people that maybe we didn't give glor glor glowing reviews to the people we didn't give glowing reviews. Um, we still appreciate you. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And love, love giving the opportunity to be honest in our opinions and that you, you know, you're kind of like, you yeah, get it. you know, you I, it. yeah, I want to say shout out to every single brand that got a good, a so so, or a negative review from us this year. You put yourself out there, you made yourself available, and I really appreciate that because to do a channel like this week in and week out, it takes a lot of effort from us. It takes a lot of effort from you guys, the viewers, and it takes effort on be on behalf of the brands. And I'm just really appreciative of the team mentality, if you will, that we all kind of share in this because you've, you've supported us. You've allowed us to continue with this channel the way that we are. And you've, you've, you've gone so far as to allow us to take this channel to new heights that you're going to see in the upcoming year. But it also is the brands amidst shortages and, and stock issues still finding a way to get us something to talk about. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Really do appreciate it. Um, and if you were nominated on this list, know that you made a great product. You really, you really, really did. Um, winners are, it's, it's meant to be fun. Um, and I, I could give an award to every single product we talked about today. And um, which brings me to you guys. This is your turn. Now it is time for you guys to share with us and everyone else watching this. What is your product of the year for 2021? let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy have left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And we thank you very, very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. I don't want to give too much away, but if you haven't done that yet, I think you're going to want to do that, especially as we get into the new year. I think there's going to be a lot of things for you to follow. Uh, anyway, that's it for us. That is it for the products of the year 2021. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So thank you again for watching. Thank you for all of the support. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.